Hey there, comrades. It's your pal, Quinn Oswin, and uh, like half of the rest of YouTube, I wanted to do a video looking back on uh, 2019, uh, looking back at my work, seeing how everything panned out, and uh, looking forward to uh, see how I'm going to take the lessons I learned this year into 2020. But first, I'd like to seriously thank all the people who subscribe to me, especially those of you who put me over the 200 subs mark uh, right before the new year. That was really... That was really nice. And if you like what you you seen here, stick around. I'm gonna get more ambitious. At least that's the plan. So I haven't quite been at this for a year, but looking back, uh, I have definitely improved. Uh, my first videos were all off camera, you know, Sean style, except I didn't know how to enunciate or make my audio sound good at all. And uh, when I did start going on camera, I didn't have any idea how like focus or exposure or lighting worked at all either. Uh, but I worked that all out and uh, the last video I released, uh, last video of the year, is uh, the first thing I've ever made that I could even remotely call a film. So I'd say that's progress. I think that video is pretty good by the way. You should uh, go check it out. So yeah, I'd say if anything, this year was a learning experience. It was mostly me just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. I mean, <laughs> I literally did my coming out video just running around in the woods. So yeah, I did not, however, like my experiments with unscripted content. In one, I gave a half-baked take on cancel culture and I defended Vosh in it, which I had to uh, walk back in a whole other video. The other one I think was fine. It was my uh, universal basic income video. Uh, and as you can see from the thumbnail, uh, I was kind of goading Yang supporters. Yeah. Basically, I didn't treat the subject matter with like the seriousness that it deserved. Um, and so I ended up having to argue with a whole bunch of people in the comments and on Reddit. And it was just, it wasn't really a great time. I find that when I script things, the first draft is always kind of flippant or maybe even aggressive. But as I research it and edit it and, you know, rehearse it, I, I tend to soften my tone a little bit. And I kind of try to treat it as um, me trying to may you know, maybe reach out to people who don't necessarily agree with me. And I think that really helps my work overall. I even, I, <laughs> I even did exactly one Twitch stream where I misgendered Chris Sabo throughout it. And that sucked. Other than that, it was fun, but it just felt kind of hollow. And, and that's not me trying to throw shade at Twitch streamers, particularly not my, my butter horse comrades. It just, I just really got the sense that it wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted to do. It really wasn't for me. It was really fun though. I would definitely suggest that if you're uh, possibly interested in it, giving it a try. It's, it is really fun. I have negative feelings about this unscripted content I did, not just because it felt it was lacking, but because of why I did it in the first place. I was essentially chasing the algorithm. I was trying to crank out more videos, uh, you know, cause I see, uh, you know, video creators like big and small all over the place, cranking out videos like once a week or even more, uh, good videos too. And you know, I, I, I wanted to do that and Hey, maybe someday I'll get there. But for now I need the time to research and edit and script stuff just to bring it up to a standard that I'm comfortable with. And I have been having some success with semi scripted videos, uh, where I'll write a script and I'll like have it out, but I won't, uh, follow it hundred percent. I'm actually doing that right now. And that helps me have a more conversational tone while having a clearly defined idea of what I'm trying to say. The other thing that I don't like looking back is which of my videos did well. Looking strictly at view counts, you can very easily divide my videos into two categories. There are those that are around or below 200 views and those that are around or above 500. Do you see a, a pattern here? Okay, well, let's let's remove the YouTube walkout video. Uh, it, it's a bit different than the others. It was, you know, part of a specific moment. It got a whole bunch of views in one week and a handful since then. 
Now, I don't think these videos are bad, per se. In, in fact, I, I think my Stephen Woodford video is pretty good. But what I did with that was it's not actually about the controversy that was swirling around him at the time. And, and by controversy, I mean transphobia. And while I do touch on his transphobia, I, you know, I used it as a broader takedown of his approach to politics in general because he had a bunch of videos from before that drove me crazy before the transphobia shit. So in this case, I, I think I played it. I think I played it right. I used the controversy in order to talk about something a little bit bigger, uh, even if it was still just about this one uh, specific YouTuber. And I kind of did the same thing with uh, the ContraPoints video, but my Vosh video is not that. I was hurt and angry after the Thought Slime incident, as as a lot of us were, and I felt like I had to distance myself from Vosh because I had defended him the day before i haven't rewatched the video and i probably won't but i know that i didn't use the bullshit to talk about something bigger and i just slapped it together in a few hours it's really not very good and it's on track to become my first video with over a thousand views that's not my favorite thing in the world but uh it is what it is i guess it just, it just really illustrates how easy it can be to just chase the latest controversy, especially when you're trying to do good work. You're trying to get, you know, as many leftist ideas into as many heads as possible. Without even thinking about it, you can fall into some sort of liberal game of calling out this week's bad stuff instead of using it to talk about bigger issues. And I'm not criticizing those who walk this line. Like, uh, we need a diversity of tactics, and uh, some people are really good at this, uh, like Gushin and Reeducation. Uh, but I am not. So what did I like about my work in 2019? There are three videos uh, that in my mind stand above the rest. The first one was my first episode of my How the Profit Motive Fail series, though I don't think I can call it a series since I've only made one of them. I did just about everything I want to do in a video. I, I talked about resource management in bold terms. I, I added an international dimension. I, I wrapped it all up in uh, a critique of how capitalism just fails at managing this resources. And, you know, I, I threw a bunch of good jokes in there. It just, it just works. It just, it was just really good. The second was my second episode of my In Defense of Things That Suck series, uh, the one about Daenerys Targaryen. I made a lot of improvements uh, to the format the second time around. Uh, the first one was the first video I made, so yeah, it was a little rough. But yeah, I analyzed Danny's story in a way I didn't see a lot of other people do. Uh, I thought the jokes were really good. I recorded like six songs for it. It was just, I had a lot of fun making it. I think it really worked. I'm damn proud of it. The third was my reintroduction video, which was my first attempt at filmmaking. And I, I think it turned out pretty good. Go watch it. So what does this all mean for 2020? Well, one of the things I want to do is try to hold myself to a video every two weeks. I think this is doable. And within those videos, I want to kind of alternate between the overtly political and media stuff, which is probably going to be political anyway, but you, 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 know, you get the difference. I have a list of ideas that I'm super looking forward to exploring, and uh, the political videos are going to get both broader and narrower. I have a few ideas, uh, a few broad subjects that I want to talk about that I don't see a lot of other people on LeftTube talking about. Um, and so I you know, definitely want to do those, but I'm also planning on, as the primary gets going, doing videos about Bernie Sanders. In fact, my next video is about Bernie. I'm also planning on doing at least two episodes of How the Profit Motive Fails this year. I don't know why, but I'm having a really hard time motivating myself to just get the research going on the next episode, which is why I didn't make another one, you know, for... 2019. I'm also going to expand the role that music has in my videos and I'm going to play around with acting more. My last video is but a taste of things to come. As far as media stuff, I'm going to have to drastically reduce the number of clips that I use. Um, going through an entire series of television to find clips for a 20 minute video uh, can just double the length of time that it takes for me to make these videos and like it's not really a problem with movies but i'm not a movie person i like I, I mean i like movies of course i like movies 
But TV is my jam, and uh, it's what I really want to talk about. As far as my Patreon, you know, I was kind of trying to get people to join it in a few ways. Uh, But honestly, the only reason I started it, I mean, I thought, hey, maybe I can make enough money that, like, I can, you know, just use that towards the money for people that I support on Patreon. You know, I do about 20 bucks a month. Uh, you know, supporting different creators on Patreon, and I thought, hey, you know, maybe I can make that much, and then just, you know, pass it on. Maybe have some left over for snacks. I don't know. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stop plugging it uh, for now. You know, if you want to support me on Patreon, links are on the the thing. Uh, there's one in the, the description of every video. Uh, it it it's whatever. You know, if if I do get some people, I'll start doing tiers. I'll I'll put videos out early there you know maybe it'll help me keep a schedule um but for now i'm just gonna kind of meh with it that's whatever 2020 is gonna be a good year i think uh you know unless we have another uh financial meltdown and trump gets reelected then it will be bad but i'm i'm optimistic and and that's not usually something i am but anyway i hope you all had a great 2019 i hope you all have a great 2020 and I hope y'all come back. I got stuff a brewing. It's gonna be good. You'll see. All right. Now I'm gonna go eat. I am absolutely starving. Cheers. <laughs>